Welcome back to Two Trees in a Pod with Alyssa and Sam, where we talk about all things life and relationships and tie it back to faith. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Sam. And today we are excited to talk to you about establishing routine in terms of faith. Let's get into it. Welcome, welcome back. Happy Tuesday. How, uh, how are you doing today, Sam? We are thriving another week at the office. We're back home. Life is good. The weather's getting nice. No complaints. How are you doing, Alyssa? I'm all right. I'm going to be a little out of breath on the episode. I am sick once again, so (laughs) I feel like every other week I've got some sort of sickness, but I've been like down bad for like four weeks now, I think. Ever since I got back from Germany, I've had something wrong with me health-wise, and it's just been, it's making me spiral a little bit, but it's okay. To be fair, you were also getting sick before Germany. This has been a very ill year for you. Yeah, but at least I had like a week off of sickness before Germany. Now it's just like, it's just a constant, whatever. It is not the Alyssa Sickness podcast. (laughs) I am no longer a nanny as of last week, so hopefully I will never be sick again. That should contribute to your health, no longer dealing with sick kids. You would think, because, I don't know, transitioning into the office, I feel like, is another Petri dish, and it's going to be interesting. It will be, but I definitely think, you know, whether it be physical or mental, the office will be a healthier place than sick kids. Yeah. So at least physically, I think you might be doing a little better. I am going to miss the kids, though. They're my buddies. So anyways, today I feel like we've been better about cutting down on chit-chat in the beginning of episodes. But it did need to be said that I will be out of breath this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of sound stupid. But anyways, today we were talking about routine and how faith can kind of fall into routine in a good way, like a habit. And... I know Sam is very good at this, and I am very bad at this, so I hope we can offer two contrasting perspectives on it as someone who struggles with it and someone who succeeds with it. So Sam, you have an interesting approach to routine. You treat life like a video game, you tell me. So what is, explain that to somebody who has never played a video game before, like you were. Well, in a video game, you as the player have a bunch of different attributes you can upgrade. You can kind of level up different areas of life. And it's fun because you can see that you're making progress towards things. So I set a one-year goal of reading the Bible before Alyssa graduated. So I had a very clear progress bar towards my mission. My goal was to read the Bible. I had an end date, so it was a pretty... I like to make goals kind of linear. It helps me keep track of them and work on them. Or, like, I, to get in better physical health, I have a reminder to tell me to do push-ups and stretch every day. It seems really dumb, but I see a notification on my phone that tells me I have to do some push-ups. I'll do some push-ups. I'll check off the notification. And would you look at it, six months later, it's some of the best shape I've been in just because I've kind of automated this little task. Uh, I do that with the cat litter, and I also do that <laughs> with the Bible. I have Cat no- litter in the Bible. Yeah, I have a notification that goes off at 8 a.m. every single day, and it tells me to read the verse of the day. So I start every single day off reading the verse of the day. And that's in the Bible app, yeah? That is in the Bible app, and it keeps track of your streak. And for, you know, people listening, you've probably done Snapchat streaks. I'm doing the Bible streak, and it gives you a little streak icon, so it's very fun to keep track of. Yeah, and you feel very motivated by things like streaks and, like, keeping, like, I don't know how long your Bible streak is, but it's pretty long. I know you lost it, right? I that did. was, like, devastating for you. That was a very, very bad day. <laughs> and didn't you check it at, like, 12.01 in the morning and yep. so your streak was I, lost? I checked it, like, right after midnight. I'm like, I didn't look. And that was such a terrible day. But anyways, my streak is back at, like, 200 days or something. That's really great. impressive. <laughs> it's not easy 
to keep like for a lot of people it's not easy to keep routine like that like we kind of preface the episode with like I am bad at routine Sam's good at routine let me tell you how bad at routine I am there are so many things that would make my life better if I just did them every day like I'm the type of person and I'm sure plenty of you out there plenty of you are four listeners plenty of you out there can relate to this at least one of you I am the type of gal who I won't, like, tidy as I go. I will do one manic binge clean where, like, I'm cleaning for, like, three to six hours. And this is just in terms of, like, keeping the apartment clean or whatever. So I, in my brain, somehow think it's more efficient to do three hours of cleaning on one day opposed to, like, 15 minutes here and there throughout the week. And that is where our living balance works really well. Does it? Well, (laughs) throughout the week, I do my 10, 15 minute cleans. I tidy up, I'll vacuum, do the litter box, whatever. You're really good at day to day things. Like like surface level cleaning. Oh, there's a few dishes in the sink. I'll take care of them. Cool. And then that one time comes over the course of a month or two where it's like, okay, the apartment needs a deep clean. And I'm like, well, I've kept it maintainable. And Alyssa's like, nope, I'm going to scrub every inch that is unseeable to the human eye. And then the place is like, oh, it's actually really bright right now. It's super clean. It's a rage clean. (laughs) That's what it is. Usually something in me like snaps and then I have to rage clean. And it's not even like provoked by anybody else. It's all internal. So it's like an internal battle for me to have like daily routines. But I can like power out like this is how I'm treating my I'm reading the bible in one year and instead of me reading like a little bit here and there every day I'm like okay cool I'm gonna sit on this plane for the next uh, 10 hours on this flight and I will not look up from my bible and I will read the bible and that is how I read like 300 pages of the bible and like wouldn't it make more sense for me to just read four chapters a day? I think if you read four chapters a day, you read the whole Bible in a year. But no, I'm like, I am going to set aside the six hour chunk where I will do nothing but this to make progress on it. And that's how I am with schoolwork too. I try to get all my schoolwork done on one day. And that is so much. Like there's no differentiation in what you're doing when you treat it like that. And it can kind of make tasks feel bigger. Like, what's the difference between me tidying up the bathroom a little bit, like a little scrub here and there, maybe once or twice a week, or me manically rage cleaning it for three straight hours? I think the best kind of relatable example is if you got homework, let's say you got an assignment on a Monday... And it's due on Friday. If I got that assignment, I would have just finished it on Monday and enjoyed the rest of my week. That is not the case for many people. I don't really have too much stress or anxiety. Okay, shalom. Other people do have a lot of stress and anxiety. I, I Or other people. It would be you. Okay. But... When you think about it, what do you have between Monday and Friday? You have the task you have to do, and free time. So are you going You've got to... you free time? Are you, are you going to take that free time first and worry about the task that you have to get done the entire time, which means your free time is now stressed? Or are you just going to get the homework out of the way so you know you have nothing to do and you can just enjoy the rest of that time? And maybe that time's not necessarily free, but like... It's just such a more relaxing way to go about things of, okay, say the assignment takes an hour. It's either going to be an hour at the start of the week or the end of the week. See, I see what you're getting at, but I'm actually kind of good at this. Because my <laughs> I said I have one day a week where I do homework. It's Monday. <laughs> I do all my homework on Monday except for this one like recurring project that I can't do until the rest of my group contributes and i have to wait until they're finished but everything other than that i have done on monday or tuesday like sometimes it seeps into tuesday so your points are all invalid well that's not (laughs) it's not a bad thing 
But the thing is, if you get an assignment on Tuesday mm. that's due the following Tuesday, you say, congrats, I'm going to save that for next it's Monday. For Monday. It's Monday's Monday. work day. And then when you realize, oh, all the assignments over the course of the week are now all piled up on Monday, it can get overwhelming instead of just doing the assignment on Tuesday because it was assigned on Tuesday. I don't know about that. So there, there's my counterpoint to your binge work Monday. Well, how can we put a spin on this for faith? Because what are the habits you have in faith that should be in your routine? Prayer is one. I think a great way to tie that in is, do you start praying when you're in a bad situation or you need God's help or you want to talk to him because there's a situation... Or are you continuously living in prayer, going through your day, having an open conversation? And that way, when one of these situations does arise, it's not a, oh, God, hey, can you come help? It's a, hey, so I'm going through this right now. And it's an open conversation. You're not saving up, you know, all your God combo for one minute. It's a constant thing. That way, it's just, oh, okay, this is just part of my day. How would you feel if you had a friend who would like, you wouldn't really talk to throughout the week, maybe it's like, you see them every day though, but you don't really talk except for this one day throughout the week. And in that little talking session, you don't get a word in. This friend's just trauma dumping on you. They're venting. They're like, my life sucks. Can you help me here? I need help with this, this, this. I need you to do this for me. That wouldn't feel like a great friendship, right? Is it really even a friendship at that point or a relationship? It's just, it's really one-sided. And the thing about God is that he wants a relationship with you that doesn't look like that. He wants that constant communication with you. He wants to walk by your side through the good and through the bad. And he wants to know you. And no one's going to get to know someone through a two-minute trauma dump once a week. I think that's the point you're getting at, right? Yeah, exactly. Is your routine with God to just go to him in your time of need? Or is it hey, let's catch up. Let's get a meal. Let, let's go out. Like, what would you do with your best friend? Do you only go to your best friend every single time you need something or you're going through something? Or do you just say, hey, let's have a conversation. How you doing? Good. And Life's good. <laughs> you know what that takes? It takes listening, too. And that could be, I mean, you were recently a non-believer. It's I think it would be better if you explained because I don't really know from that aspect of what it's like. But listening to God is also a part of the relationship, just like letting your friend speak. <laughs> it's not just your monologue, right? Prayer isn't a monologue. Prayer also involves giving God space to talk to you. Can you talk about what that means? A lot of the time we'll get and this is you know the stressful the anxiety ridden decisions the oh i don't know what to do next i don't know what the that's okay it's okay to not know what to do next but you're never going to get the answer if you keep trying to dig around and solve it instead of just taking a moment and saying all right god i don't know what my next steps are can you help guide me can you show me what to do let your will be done help show me how to best take these next steps and give me the strength to do so. And as easy as that may sound, it's not. It's it, it really takes, not. It takes practice, routine. And when you get into these situations of, I don't know what to do next, if your default in those situations is to turn to God and say, hey, what should I be doing? And not trying to immediately go to whatever line of thinking you go to to try and solve it immediately. It helps take the load off. It helps take the stress off. Because you don't you're only human. You don't have the answer for all of it. That's okay. But he does. You know what the Bible says about prayer? Ask, seek, knock. What's how's it go? 
ask and the answer will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. It's talking about prayer. It's in Matthew. I don't have that. We're doing kind of a casual chat, so no notes. But I don't have that one memorized. But flip through Matthew and you will see Ask, Seek, Knock. That's the title of it in most translations. And it talks about approaching God in prayer. And if you ask God, he will answer you. And that answer might be a no, which sometimes I think as Christians, we're like, why won't God say yes to my prayers? He's not answering me. And it's a, he did well, he answer is you. saying yes to your prayers. He's saying no to your wants. Yeah. Well, he's, he's <laughs> also like, he can say no. And that's an answer. You know, that's not an unanswered prayer. That is an answered prayer. And a no to something is a yes to something else. And so I think there's a big difference between like an unanswered prayer and a no, because a lot of the time that unanswered prayer is a no. And that sucks sometimes when you really want something and you're really praying for something. You think it sucks, but it's actually what's best. And it's easy to try and find fault until you realize that you have imperfect knowledge and you don't know everything. That's a struggle. Yeah. You mean I don't know everything? Yeah, I'm going to have to... I mean, I didn't say it. God said it. God <laughs> said you don't know everything. I'll tell you that you know everything for, for my sake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think prayer is a good thing to establish like a habit and a routine into. And so we kind of talked more about the purpose of prayer. But like in terms of like habitually praying, like Sam said praying throughout the day and like living in a constant state of prayer like you're walking to class or you have a moment in your work day that's opened up or you're doing the dishes as Sam always likes to say about doing the dishes there are so many times throughout the day where you can just talk to God and it doesn't have to be this formal on your knees bible open tears flowing prayer session there's a time and a place for those But when we're talking about daily routine, prayer can just be the state of constant conversation with your father. And it's so beautiful that we have this omnipresent God who can hear what we are petitioning him for all day, every day. Like he's always going to pick up the phone. So what else? Reading the Bible. It's another faith practice for routine. It's, it's, I mean at work or just all sorts of times there are those at work hmm, there are those times throughout the day where there's like a five minute gap there's a 10 minute gap a lot of us default to okay i'll go on twitter i'll go on instagram i'll go on tiktok i'll watch a couple videos and your mind is completely all those little moments of the day where you could either have that conversation, keep up that prayer, or read scripture, they become occupied by things that are immediately forgotten. Imagine if you put all of that time into scripture or into your relationship with God. Think about just an average day going through. If every second you logged on to social media, you just clicked on the Bible app, or your phone was off and you just spent in prayer. I would have six hours of Bible app time every single day. You would have already finished it front to back. I would have finished the Bible front to back 11 times in different in 2024 (laughs) in different translations. I think something I hear a lot is Bible before phone. And that could look like opening the Bible app before you open anything else. But I also think that's something I've always wanted to be better at. And there's like, I can do it for like three days, but like, I'd lose it really quickly because I'm not establishing the habit. And I don't think I've prayed for God to like cement that habit into my life. But Bible before phone is like a quick, easy one. Like you do your 8 a.m. Bible verses that you like every day. And that helps you keep your streak. And that helps you keep the word. It's like the first thing on your mind in the morning. And it's a really great way to start your day off right. Because I saw somewhere... That because of the way, like, our brains wake up and, like, the way we receive dopamine is that the first thing you do in the day is kind of what you crave for the rest of the day. So 
And I don't know how true that is, but it's been on my mind a lot. So if the first thing you do in the morning is open Twitter or open TikTok or open Instagram, for the rest of the day, your instant gratification is going to be telling you to go back to that. But imagine if you switch that to being opening your Bible and reading three verses very small like it's not a big commitment or if you've decided to start your morning in prayer that's something you'll be craving the rest of the day if that study's true i don't know i would say it's it true. seemed credible when i read it but i don't know where it is i can't find it but i've been i've read it like a year ago and it's been in my head since then well even if you can't find the study it feels anecdotally true yeah i would think so so Bible before phone, pray before you get out of bed in the morning. You can even say a little prayer before you have lunch during work or school, even if you're with people. It doesn't have to be out loud. It could just be a little like, thank you, God, moment. He's not asking for much people. <laughs> Me, I'm people. I'm telling that to myself. So there, There is a pretty cool analogy at our Bible study the other month, I think. And it was, imagine how much time an athlete puts in training for their sport, studying for their sport, doing all these things. Imagine if you had put that much time into your faith life Oof, and your relationship I with God. I would have so and, many hours in my faith life. <laughs> but think about that. Think about, you know, maybe you're not an athlete. What's your passion? What are you spending all of your time in? And that's not saying to just quit your favorite thing. That's a hypothetical of if you spent even 50% of that time, 20% of that amount of time. 5% of that time. 5%. 1%. In the Bible, in scripture, in prayer, how much drastically different your prayer and faith life would be. I would be putting in the hours, let me tell you, if I were to give God 5% of the amount of hours I gave volleyball. I you'd, would, you'd be street preaching. I would be Mother Teresa <laughs> if I gave God my 5%. Um, anyways, so yeah, I think we're going to cut it off there because I'm not feeling great. So we're going to do a little short episode and... <laughs> Um, next week, not super sure what we're talking about yet. Um, maybe I will be feeling better, hopefully, and I can plan better. But we really want to thank you for tuning into this conversation and for joining us again for another week. We love, love, love when we see that our episode even had like two listens. Like, that's so exciting to us. Um, that someone listened to it front to back. Every analytic is a dopamine hit. It really is. It's like our new social media. Also, speaking of social media, Instagram's been a little dead lately. It's because I'm an addict and I'm really trying to just not even have the app on my phone. Though sometimes I fall short and go on a browser. <laughs> but, so our Instagram's a little dead right now. But it'll pick back up when I can find a balance. Which hopefully will be soon. So we thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great week. Stay blessed. See you next week.